the school in Borstal, the school in Rochester, um, and they are living rainy as well, so you know, it's, it's local. Lots of coming and going, but, um, but the colour blind bit has been a real revelation within sort of doing my art, if you like, because if I go back to when I first realised that I was colour blind, uh, the family had gone on a holiday to um, London. We were living in, I think, Evesham at the time, and um, we'd uh, gone downstairs, and in the science museum downstairs, they often have those sort of changing exhibitions, and this one was about um, colour blindness, and they had the, um, the colour blindness plates, the Ishihara colour blindness plates. Um, and my brothers and my sister were sort of just, you know, reeling off all these numbers as they went along, and I was, I was in tears because, you know, I couldn't see, I could see a couple of them, I certainly couldn't see the ones that they were seeing. And I think that sort of triggered something for mum as well, so within about a year, we um, had somebody come into the school to actually carry out some um, eye testing. She asked them specifically about colour blindness, and so I had the, the colour blindness tests, which then um, made me realise that I was really, really colour blind. Not massively an issue, apart from, you know, the teacher asking me to sort out the sugar paper, and that, that was just silly, basically, but, you know, that was happening. Not very many people kind of really got it, but I think that the... The most difficult part for me was when I was um, at secondary school and the um, teacher at the school, um, he wasn't a very encouraging gentleman, let's just say, um, I was doing a um, painting of a moose, basically, and of course I thought I'd done this beautiful sort of browns and all this great thing, and it turned out I'd done it purple. His response wasn't to sort of go, oh, sorry, it's a really good evening. He, he was actually sort of like, well, no, it's rubbish, rubbish sort of thing, and um, he just wasn't very encouraging. So I gave up art. I think we both gave up art at about 14, didn't we? Um, and then I didn't touch on art at all uh, for years and years and years, because I was scared of it. And I, I, I love consuming art, I love going to it, the exhibitions and everything, but I was absolutely scared of art um, until about three years ago. And I took a college course, it was just an MVQ college course. The tutor on that course was amazing. And she, I, I said to her, I'm really scared of this. It was actually a friend who signed me up for it. It was like, whoa, I'm not sure about this. Um, but she noticed something about the way that I was sketching people. And so she really focused me on that. She said, don't, don't even care about the colour part of it, just, just focus on the, you know, the people. And that's kind of where I started with, 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 with sketching and not using any kind of colour at all. So, basically, these are the kind of first drawings that I was doing, you know, and it was all about the shading. It wasn't anything to do with colour. I didn't find it scary because there was nothing in there that challenge my colour perception, if you like. However, um, I kind of, yeah, as, as you do as an artist, you kind of evolve, and I wanted to start using colours. Um, but I was so scared of it that I really just focused on doing paintings where you had a background and then you just had one star colour on it. So, I kind of moved on, so for example, Will Smith sort of thing. So, you, you kind of got almost, it's still got the sort of drawing feel about it, if you know. But um, I could only cope with that one colour on a background sort of thing. So, and I did that for quite a long time. Just slowly, I just sort of wanted to do something a bit different. So I realised that what I was actually seeing wasn't necessarily the colours within um, a picture that I was trying to do. What I was actually seeing was the tones within it as well. So I started realising that if I looked at a set of colours, put them from dark to light, and started layering the colours that way, then um, I'd actually perhaps be able to do something that's a little bit different. And so I started working with pretty and a tiny little bit in more of colour. So you can see I'm just, it's the same kind of, I'm still scared at this point, you know, because it's literally like, you know, I don't know how to use it. But you can also pop in, you know, just little bits of another colour. And just slowly, slowly, I was starting to put in more and more colour detail into it, but still focusing on it being sort of dark and light colours, not about the actual colours that you're seeing in front of you. Um, that kind of evolved quite quickly, and I started going a bit more for gusto with it. So this is my teapot. Um, but as you can see, you know, you've got these very dark sorts of colours going up to light, and that's exactly how I found comfort in painting with colours. And to be honest, I haven't necessarily evolved a huge amount beyond that with the way I use colour. Um, one of the latest ones I've done is of our friend Sweet as well. And you can still see that even though there is more detail in it, it's still to do with blaming colours. There is no blending. I 
cannot blend colours at all. So it, it all is to do with layers of colour. You can see on the skull as well that it's all to do with how I'm layering from dark to light. So, so that's basically how I have learned to sort of, um, you know, use colour as a colour blind artist.